Hello, I'm Virginia Eskin. Welcome to First Ladies of Music, a new series about women composers. This program is underwritten by a generous grant from Northeastern University in Boston. We've come to our last program, and it's going to be a roundup of contemporary women composers of the world. We're going to go to Russia, China, Japan, Mexico, Brazil, Iceland, Finland, Canada, Africa. So many of our programs have dealt with issues about patronage or when things weren't ideal back maybe in the Romantic period. And as we've moved into the 20th century, many of those problems just evaporated. It still is not exactly easy to be a composer, but it's a lot easier today than it was 100 or 200 years ago. And there's a wonderful openness to the idea that a woman could compose music. Let's go to Finland and learn a little bit about Kaya Sariahu. She is very busy and very successful and gets a lot of commissions. She's born back in 1952. She studied both music and fine arts as a girl at the University of Art and Design in Helsinki. She lives in Paris now, and I think the fact that she had that art and music training as a young woman has really contributed to the fact that her music is very pictorial. I can't say enough good about the fact that she takes on extremely large schema. She likes to write about the sea or the universe or time, you know, huge kind of abstractions. We're going to listen to a piece that is about the ocean and the universe. It was written in 1998 for the New York Philharmonic. The music is heavy. It's the rolling of the ocean, and it addresses birth and death, the idea that death follows life, and the voyage goes on. I've chosen two sections for us to hear. One is called Love, and the other is Time, from a big cycle called Ultramar, From the Sea.
You've heard Love and Time by Kaya Sariahu from her cycle Ultramar, played by the Tapiola Chamber Choir with the Finnish Radio Symphony Orchestra conducted by Jukka Pekka Sarasta. Now we're going to go up to the north to Iceland and learn about Jorun Vidar, very famous composer in Iceland. She was born there in 1918. She's married and has three grown children and has written music of a very large variety for orchestra, chamber ensembles, piano, ballet, theater, and film. Vidar was educated in Europe and America, but her style is very individualistic, in that way it's Icelandic, with a little bit of Europe reflected in it. It's interesting to note that she studied with her mother, like so many of our composers, and then was enrolled in school in Reykjavik, studying ballet and violin, and this was a good background for her eventual life in music. We've chosen a song sung in German entitled Im Khan, which means in the boat. Listen to this beautiful song by Jorun Vidar.
You've heard Ellen Oscars Dottir singing with Garrett Schul playing the piano, a small song called Im Khan, composed by Jorun Vidar. Now we go to Russia and we're going to learn about Sofia Gubaidulina. In a way, she is perhaps the most famous of our women composers on the program today. She was born in 1931 and was the daughter of a Russian mother and a Tartar father. She studied composition in the Tartar capital, Kazan, and then continued her studies at Moscow Conservatory under Paiko, who was a pupil of Shostakovich. She is to break rank with what we would call tonal music, and in that way, Gubaidulina follows so many of the paths of the women we've been studying. She looks to nature, and if one were to talk about what is her style, the word spiritual would enter into it because many of her pieces concern themselves with not only nature, but religion in a very abstract sense, religion in, in the way people think of God as a universal force. It concerns itself with spatial relationships in sound. And we've chosen two small pieces that embody this very well. It's not standard music though, because it's little scripts and scraps, like a collage of sound. So listen to these two pieces. One lasts for two minutes and the other lasts for one minute. What she does here is use the accordion, a bayan, and strings. Here are two movements from Gubaidulina's work, Silencio.
You've heard two movements from the work Silencio, composed by Sofia Gubaidulina. It was played by Frederick Lips on Bayan, Kiron Kramer, the violinist, and Vladimir Tonka on cello. Now we leave Russia and go over to China. Our woman to study here is Chen Yi. She was born in 1953 in the southern city of Gangshu, and Chen Yi started also on the violin and continued in her graduate years here in America at Columbia University in the late 1980s. She actually has become a sort of a spokesperson for the Chinese in that she always incorporates Chinese elements into her music, but it is a good fusion of Western symphonic style, by that I mean it's tonal music, with all kinds of Chinese elements woven into it, like a tapestry. And what's good, Chen Yi has realized the value in both. Let's listen to two dances that demonstrate what I'm talking about. The first is called Lion Dance, and the second is just Dance. And I've chosen them because it's a really good example of why Chen Yi is popular.
You just heard two pieces by Chen Yi. The first was Lion Dance, performed by Cho Liang Lin, violin, with the Singapore Symphony. Lan Shui was the conductor. And the second involved two violins. That was Dance, from Romance and Dance, played by Cho Liang Lin and Yi Jia Suzanne Hao. You're listening to First Ladies of Music with Virginia Eskin over the WFMT Radio Network. Welcome back to First Ladies of Music. Now we're going to move to Africa and we're going to learn about a sort of an unusual work composed by Laura Kaminsky. Trouble Came, this is an African AIDS diary from Ghana where Kaminsky lived and she wrote on the 25th of April, 1993. A year in Ghana and a commission to write a piece about AIDS. How unlikely that these should occur simultaneously. So what she's done is take a sort of almost untouchable subject and put it into the shape of narration and music and tried to really transcend the horror of the epidemic that AIDS is. And by making it a very strong thing, it tells the story. Kaminsky is to be praised for taking on a very difficult subject. We've chosen the last two movements to share. I want to die while you love me and trouble came performed by the Fidelio Ensemble, narrated by Mark Lamos. I want to die while you love me, while yet you hold me fair, while laughter lies upon my lips and lights are in my hair. to die while you love me. I could not bear to see the glory of this perfect day grow dim or cease to be. I want to die while you love me. Oh, who would care to live Till love has nothing more to ask and nothing more to give. I want to die while you love me. And bear to that still bed your kisses. Turbulent spent to warm me when I'm dead. Thank you. 
which I greatly feared is come upon me. You just heard the last two movements, I Want to Die While You Love Me, and the coda, Trouble Came. They were composed by Laura Kaminsky, who wrote this unusual piece about AIDS happening in Africa, performed by the Fidelio Ensemble, and the narrator was Mark Lamos. Now we zip down to Mexico and look at the music of Graciela Agudelo. She was born in Mexico City in 1945 and studied as a pianist originally at the Escuela Nacional, and then she studied composition at the Instituto Nacional de Bellas Artes. Agudelo has received many awards, commissions, articles, and essays have been written for important magazines, and her oeuvre includes piano, chamber music, and works for the theater and television. At the present, she is the principal of the School of Music and Dance in Mexico City, and we're going to listen to a piece she composed played by Andrea Lieberherr, who's the flute soloist on this CD. You just heard a flute piece composed by Graciela Agudelo, played by Andrea Lieberherr. It was entitled Adios from the Meditation on Abya Yala. It was composed in 1995. Now we're going to hear another Mexican woman composer. Her name is Ana Laura. She studied with a very well-known Mexican composer named Mario La Vista in Mexico City and with Ludoslavsky in Poland. She says that she composes music using an abstract tonal palette 
Let's listen to a short piece entitled Ángel de Alba.
You just heard a short piece composed by Anna Laura. It was the Angel of Alba. It was played by the Philharmonic Orchestra of UNAM. Now we're going to stay down south and we're going to visit Brazil. This woman's name is Maria Elena Fernandes. And this is a small piano piece called Preludio that was written in 1973. It consists of a compelling series of short melodic phrases on a two-measure theme. This exemplifies the dance genre as it flourished in Brazil, sometimes European in origin, but Brazilian in character. The left-hand part resembles the guitar. Doesn't this sound familiar? We were talking about Qian Yi in China who used her folkloric elements with European sounds, and Fernandes does the same thing here. She uses Brazilian elements with European sort of overlay. Let's listen to Luciana Suarez playing Maria Elena Fernandez's Preludio. You just heard the preludio of Maria Elena Fernandez played by Luciana Suarez. Now we zoom up to Canada and we're going to hear a short vocal work by Nancy Telfer. It's called The Blue Eye of God. Nancy Telfer was born in 1950 and apparently has written over 180 works for soloists, chamber ensembles and orchestra. She's a frequent speaker and guest soloist and she maintains a love of diverse natural environments. Here we go again with nature. In this song, Nancy Telfer has depicted the clustered cries of a creature, ay, 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 the flapping of a huge seabird's wings, schwa, wa, wa. I like it. Here's the blue eye of God. You just heard Nancy Telfer's The Blue Eye of God sung by the Toronto Children's Choir, Jean Ashworth Bartle was the conductor. We're going to end our roundup with Shulamit Ron. She's received many prizes in 1991, a Pulitzer for Music, and the Kennedy Center gave her the Friedhelm Award in 1992. Her works are performed by major orchestras, the New York Philharmonic, Amsterdam, Jerusalem, Philadelphia orchestras. She was composer in residence with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, in fact, she teaches at the University of Chicago. She's quoted as saying, I've never forgotten the vital essence of composition as communication. And that's an important part, of course, of music. Composition is a way of communicating. The audience is a vital part of the experience. Women have, to my ears, gone out of their ways to try and connect, contribute, and communicate so let's go out with a bang with Shulamit Ron's piece, Big Bands.
You just heard Shulamit Ron's piece, Big Bands, played by the Bowling Green Philharmonia, based at Bowling Green University in Ohio. Emily Freeman Brown was the conductor. Well, I hope you've enjoyed listening and learning about women composers. It's been a lot of fun for us to put together the series. Thank you for listening to First Ladies of Music. First Ladies of Music with Virginia Eskin is produced by Carolyn Pollan for the WFMT Radio Network. Steve Robinson is the executive producer. The engineer is Mary Mazurik. Thanks to Alice Abraham, librarian at WGBH Radio in Boston. And special thanks to Boston's Northeastern University for their generous support. I'm Virginia Eskin for First Ladies of Music. This is the WFMT Radio Network.